employers told us that they had more than one worker, which means there's probably a supervisory relationship um, in that household. The average that employers told us throughout two per household, munerated or protected in law. Why is that? Another quote from a Myanmar domestic worker, an advocate here in Thailand that's in the report is, people look down on you. Everyone likes to, so this is a perception that we have to, so just a, a little, women are assumed to have acquired domestic work skills during their gendered upbringing, even though these might not be perceived or socialized as skills. Justification for not which employers justifying a family context is okay next slide so the three takeaways again there right um, so what this event but what they're doing getting together and talking to policymakers about and a campaign where domestic workers in Thailand um, spoke social security here rather than the current state of exclusion uh, can you flip this slide, please? Yeah. And these are great, but unfortunately, part of, part of systemic and full inclusion in labor law. Uh, so what do we have so far? What positive protection not so long ago? Um, the law was changed. Oh, sorry, can you go back to the slide before? Yep. Okay, so in Malaysia, the law was recently changed to change the term domestic servants to domestic employee to the disappointment of domestic workers. Um, second, a huge win in Malaysia since 2021 is that domestic workers are now included in social security. We had a large event on this yesterday, in fact, with uh, Liesl who will be speaking and my colleague uh, Maria and some others in Malaysia should be something followed in other countries. Malaysia also has a national plan of action against forced labor and has signed the forced labor protocol. Um, included at domestic workers inclusion in minimum wage and we are hoping that that um, is followed through soon. It gives domestic workers um, at least insurance in Singapore to households in the first year of work. In Thailand, um, live in a there, it is not a requirement that domestic workers live in, like it is, um, and both serial regulation 14, that um, if passed, and so the report gives a lot of recommendations, but there are four that are overarching and really would make a catalyzing effect on this sector. And ensuring domestic workers enjoy rights at least equal to those of other workers in law and in practice sustained suppression of forced labor in domestic work. Third is to formalize skills recognition opportunities for domestic workers age and communication. Fourth is ensuring regular migration pathways for domestic workers that appropriately recognize the skilled nature of the I, I hope the three points stick and move to the next segment. So I'll hand back over to Joanna. Awesome. Thanks so much, Rebecca, for walking us through the report. Um, and the fourth will be super exciting later on to hear from um, domestic workers and just hear briefly from um, the key researchers behind this report. Um, the first of these is Jenna Holiday, um, the author. She unfortunately cannot be with us in person today, but she's joining us online. Um, and we'll be hearing a video message from her shortly. Um, and the other key researcher we must mention is Daniel. Um, and his team from Rapid Asia. Daniel, if you're in the room, can you give us a wave? Give us a wave, that's Daniel right there. Um, so if you have any questions later on about... Di Hi, my name is Jenna Holiday, and I'm a migration specialist based in the UK. I want to start by apologising that I can't be with you today, 
to see this report launched in person. This work is incredibly important and it was a privilege to be involved in it. Using of skills involved in domestic work and the exploitative labour conditions that many migrant domestic workers continue to experience. In addition to our society, employers and the migrant and how often qualitative research come to life. As we found with this study, it can also influence the direction of the research itself. In Singapore, the data told a relationship that agents continue to have with workers and employers illustrated the multiple ways that women were navigating the immigration and employment systems in a way that demonstrated autonomy and agency and ultimately resulted in better working conditions. This was able to help us explain the quantitative data that was telling us that forced labour in Thailand did not correlate with reported on workload. A particular example being the employer who told me that her domestic worker took her dog out for a walk after finishing work stories. Some that did not make it into the report at length, but after domestic work, own families back home. These were often stories of loss, not being able to return home to bury parents or to greet new grandchildren or even migrant domestic work provides to leave conflict and as a gateway to better work in new countries willing to accept that this meant sharing a bedroom numbers. And it reminds us that when forced labor, which is what these findings show, what it's saying is that five or seven or 29 out of every hundred migrant domestic workers, women with families, homes, aspirations and voices are experiencing significant exploitation. I hope this study goes some way to it and I'll be online for questions should there be any. Thank you. Round of applause for Jenna. Yeah, she's online and she's whether it's 5% or 29%, these are real human stories. And if you'd like to come up here um, for a little fireside chat where we hear about their experiences um, in domestic work. So welcome to the stage, Anna, um, technical specialist with the Triangle and ASEAN program, and our domestic workers, Liesl, Yanti, and Champa. Can we give them a round of applause? Okay, uh, thank you very much, Joe, Rebecca, and Kun Pin for your earlier presentation event. I am absolutely honoured to be moderating this discussion with three of the most impressive women you will ever see speak on domestic work. Absolutely. Uh, between them, they have over 50 years of experience in domestic work and each of them also plays an absolutely critical role in the domestic worker movement in their countries of employment. They are brave and have graciously agreed to be here today so that we can hear something of their stories and some of their reactions to the research that you've just seen presented. So thank you to Liesl, Yanti and Champa for taking the time out of your schedule. Thank you to your employers for allowing you to take the time out of your schedule and we're so grateful that you're able to be here to lead for Filipino migrant domestic workers in Malaysia. For decades, she's been able to support her family and her parents through migrant domestic work in Kuwait and Malaysia. She's also, this is the woman to go to, Java, and she volunteers with the Home Organization, which is dedicated to supporting the rights of migrant workers in Singapore. Alongside this work, she's at the volleyball. <laughs> and Champa is, an, an, she represents a network of domestic workers from Myanmar and advocates for their rights within Thailand, including, as Rebecca mentioned, for their inclusion from there. So, ladies, you've heard the summary of the research as they gain experience and they gain understanding the job that domestic workers and particularly migrant domestic workers get the length of time. And good afternoon, everyone. Um, there's a lot of story to tell, but um, the, I, I mean, for now, my employer is okay. She's good that she allowed me to be here, but before I, I also experienced, um, like I was locked up. During Sundays, when the, the employer is outside of the country, they travel, they left me inside because they don't give me the access card. So how can I go down? 18 years to be that the reality or that bring me where I am now. 
why I am um, organizing migrant domestic workers for them not to experience with them for six years but during the time when my father died I was not able to go back so that's the very sad thing in my life that I have to face even after the 13 years the pain is still here because you know it's your you lost your parents it's it's really really sad so that's the challenge and that's why I am organizing migrant domestic workers to not uh, you know experience what I'm experiencing thank you very much Cecil I'm sure I'm not the only one who's moved by that story as well so thank you Yanti did you want to talk a little bit uh, hello everyone uh, thank you for the chance uh, I'm Yanti I'm from Indonesia uh, now I'm working the Singapore is better more the better but the first time I so have lawyer because I have abuse for two years four months uh, my employer always slap my face because uh, always jealous by attacking care the small children my family and I also don't have any off day because in the contract already sent like that so I just follow the rules so what happening when after 18 months I just wondering if my baby is passed away already for 18 months this is very painful for me because I don't know I, sometimes I cannot believe uh, uh, my baby is passed away already until 18 months I just know about that then I still continue with my employer because uh, the time I really need to earn money for my family but of course the fight then I still continue but my employer is become more to do abuse me then that's why I go to home as to help then until now I be following the top of a really awful sad story I think we see the importance of the solidarity and the organizations that can support domestic workers as well when they face troubles, which of course, as all other humans, they will do in their working life. Champa? Yeah. For me, uh, for me, it was, uh, as you said, and uh, the experience. Experience of 30 years is not, uh, some of you might not be born <laughs> here. See, you look very young, 22. So I've been working as a domestic worker for 30 years. In 30 years, uh, yes, uh, we do face this. Uh, and, uh, uh, but the thing I remember most is that the, the first when I work uh, first as a domestic worker, you know, I used to for sisters. It's I used to look at my employers if they are happy. Face uh, if she's happy, then I will just go inside the room and ask for the tomorrow. Can I fail? watching a sad movie? I would not go inside the mm -hmm. inside the room to ask for the uh, day off because I knew. I would, I, they would say, no, I'm in a bad mood, I'm not going to let you go. So that's domestic workers, it's, it's good. You know, I don't want anyone to feel the way. We should have to beg for our basic rights at work, or rights at work. Um, but fortunately, I think you've all gotten better at asking or demanding or uh, requiring the basic rights at work, the white rights that are enshrined in the ILO's domestic work. Can so maybe you can, are the traditional patterns of- It's not been changed over the years we still hear a lot of domestic workers who are locked in the house don't have mobiles uh, for six years they don't have their country of origin family the family already said that maybe they died already because there's no communication so things has you know still this experience where all the domestic work because many uh, that the domestic workers were really rest in the house of the employer were not resting. Even during Sundays, the employer or even the children, even if you are in your room, they will say, hey, can you cook a food for me? Can you, can you take care of the children? No. So that's why we're really um, like campaigning to have this day off to have the domestic workers uh, a protection and it's not benefiting only for the domestic workers if we have day off but also for the employers why because if we have day off we can go out skills we can you know we can it's very important for our mental health absolutely
Absolutely. I don't think anybody in this room could imagine what it is like to work seven days a week without a break. Uh, after my case done, I decided to be volunteer home is sent to town. Today I have somebody as help, but mostly Singapore is like, the case is mental abuse. I mean, mental abuse, not enough food, then some more no off day because uh, just only the MOM, uh, the rule if one of day uh, must cannot change by compensation salary. So before is the uh, off day is very difficult for us. Like one two off day, we need to cook everything, breakfast, lunch, until dinner. Come back also, we still need to clean house also. That is, and then morning only one bread and the tea without coffee. That let that only then some of the off day important for us because when we go off day we can ask people to help us also to talk to other friend to do work, uh, activity with the other friend that's why I in the, in the Singapore I doing the, the other country we still can do our activity our hobby to so, to show to other domestic worker how we keep it to ourselves. Because we talk, uh, keep fight to ourselves, uh, nobody can help. So the f first important is we must keep fight to ourselves first. So everything, uh, if we keep fight to ourselves first, so uh, we can easy to get it uh, to help to other people. Because some domestic worker scared to speech, scared to speak up because of money. We, they need money, but they are uh, how we keep fight ourselves first. Thank you very much. I think I'll have to get to a volleyball tournament <laughs> soon. Yeah, for me, um, uh, for me, domestic worker is a worker. You know, for me, working as third end of the month, I do have salary from the employer. So I'm a worker. Why not think that domestic worker is a worth and domestic workers is a worker? And why not include us? in their social security, which is, I said, what well, I always said, uh, uh, there might be young uh, girls who will come from uh, another country, like from Myanmar, at, the, at this moment, like 15 or 16, because of the situation. I was like, could they not have any, uh, I, I was not included in this by myself. It's my future is not uh, guaranteed, like I do have money or, you know, f even for the uh, pension, like other workers. So when I, so why not let us contribute and contribute? So, but the, in Thailand, as we said, uh, you are not included in the social security. So it's, it's our life. It's not sure after 60 what it's going to be for me. So this is uh, we are campaigning for, as you see in the pictures, uh, social security uh, uh, number, uh, section 33. Yeah. Thank you. I also hope that that's the case, but I, I hope in addition that we will see an updated ministerial regulation 14 that has minimum wage and some regular hours and some mandated leave as well for domestic workers in Thailand, yeah. so this portion of the event. But we have, for domestic work, quite a significant audience today and quite a significant audience online and some media presence, so we would like to communicate, please. Yeah. Um what I always saying are, or asking to people, are we domestic workers, are not human mm -hmm. like everyone? We are also human. Even the machines that are operating 24 hours a day, seven days a week, they will broke. Mm -hmm. How much more us eating noodles mm -hmm. every time or eating just a piece of bread every time? We are humans. We are deserve to be treated like a human being. In this event now, I hope that those um, uh, government who do not protect um, domestic workers will take a look. Is the International Domestic Workers Day, which is recognizing domestic worker as how we are not protected. We are not included. In the report, it says, that last year, March 2022, it was just changed in the Employment Act, 1955. Only the term from domestic servant to domestic employee. But we are not included for the protection. We are not sure to delete the first schedule for us domestic worker to be included 
and the Employment Act. So I, I'm really hoping. I, I'm hoping alongside you. Um, and that's a very clear message for some significant legal changes to take place. Yanti? Uh, for me, it's, uh, domestic worker is also human, employer also human. We drink water, employer also drink water. So still a lot of employer is discrimination of, about us. Uh, somewhere in the, sometimes we cannot play in the swimming pool. <laughs> so for me, please stop discrimination for us. Yeah, for me, same as the other sister, because we are domestic workers and we feel uh, one another, you know, we have the same problem uh, everywhere in the world, I think, for the domestic work. Yeah, I just want to say that we are human, as Lizelle said, we are human, and it's uh, working as a domestic worker, everyone is here with me, but just not a domestic worker. Sometimes you have to be a counselor for the, for the even the family of the, even the husband and wife of the employer, you know. So yes, I, I, I did that, you know. I see the family, not just I was working as a nanny, but to, when they have a problem with each other, I'm in the middle, making them good. So this, that is not skill. And uh, w what will you say when you are out, and you said when you go to the restaurant, when you go to the restaurant, you paid for, so that is not skill, right? Yeah. So for me, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a work that nobody sees from outside, but we know in ourselves, we are workers, so that's why it should be, you know, we are, have to, domestic workers have to be protected by any other workers. We are workers, and we are workers with a heart. We yes. work from our heart. So that's, yeah. that's my message. I clap for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I will clap for myself. Well, well, so for you too. I want to add on and one more as a skilled of a domestic worker. We tutor the children yeah. of the employers. How come asking us work seven hours, I uh, know, uh, seven days a week, 24 hours a day when we are not important? During the, during the COVID time, we are the best teachers ever. <laughs> because we are at home with the kids and we are the, that, you know, Lizelle, let's shoot. say, tomorrow is the International Domestic Workers Day. Let's be together, let's unite. Unite yes. is the word we have domestic workers. We are yes. together. Hi. But I, there are a couple of things I do want to point out just before we close. First of all, this skills point. Absolutely. I think we have eight or nine languages at this table alone, and I am only connected to safety, child care, elder care, emotions that make up the diversity that is domestic work. And yet, we see governments that rely on domestic workers across ASEAN, from the origin countries, who we see that reliance, and yet we see very little in terms of the migrant domestic workers in this discussion around domestic workers. The needs are human, and the deliverers of those needs are human, and they frankly deserve more respect from the governments across this region and indeed across the world. So this is your wake-up call for tomorrow, the 12th anniversary of Convention 189 for decent work on domestic work. Thank you, and join me in thanking these fabulous women for their advocacy. all for the domestic workers, um, Liesl, Yantu and Champa for sharing your experiences and your story and thank you first and foremost for your passion on this issue. I think um, we are now opening up the floor for questions and answers for Rebecca or Anna on the report and ask that question. Um, and please direct it to a person so we know who. The editor of Travel Impact Newswire based in Bangkok. I actually cover the travel and tourism. Domestic workers, for, uh, the survey covers only domestic workers, people working in homes, right? Not people working in factories, service, uh, service, those areas as well. Uh, if there is, I'd like to access it. But for the, the 1,200 workers who were interviewed, who are the employers of these, of these people in terms of either nationalities or places of work? Many of them, I assume, would be expat. Uh, these are you know, people who, who treat them like pretty, pretty badly, for, for what I can see. But I, I'd like to get some profile of own yachts and jaguars 
and yet treat the people, etc. So uh, I'd like to get some details on who are the employers of these people and... Yeah. Um, maybe I'll start with that one. Uh, well, who are the employers? Me in this room don't have good data on the employers. We know that they exist at all of the different stratifications of employment uh, sorry, of income brackets. In fact, one of the things that we hear quite regularly when we talk about is that there is a significant proportion of people who are on minimum wage who are also using the fact that there is no minimum wage protection for domestic workers to get very, very cheap households. Agree with you that we absolutely need more information about the employers, about how they justify certain kinds of behaviours, about how they set hours, how they set wages, how they additional funding for these kinds of studies, but it's a super interesting area to explore further and to also get that qualitative idea of why people treat domestic. I'm looking at you, Ben, and in the agricultural sector, I'm looking at you, Anna. So there are plenty of other studies out there on forced labour as experienced by different, are shared, certainly the struggles getting assistance from the, hope that goes some way. To it will be a question, I don't know. It's, uh, sometimes I do also think like you, we work in the house, like, I don't want to say the employer or any building, any, but they have this, uh, uh, where we work is like the chandelier is the big, I don't know how much it costs, but the living area of the housekeeper in that domestic worker in that, that house, it's the toilet inside is like, a, it's, uh, for me it will be a 10 room, but for the, uh, the quarter, the domestic worker has to leave. The toilet is like at 1920, the toilet the same, you have to sit like this. So sometimes I do also think that when they make the building, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm not expert in that. There. I'm, I'm expert in my work, my domestic work, but not in that kind of, but I do also think that how did they make, when they have this big room, big toilet with the two seat, three, you know, sometimes I've never seen that two seat or, you know, there is a two <laughs> base basin in one toilet, but for the quarter for domestic workers to live, it's like a small one with, if I get bigger than this, <laughs> I wouldn't fit the, in that room. <laughs> so I also think that when they make that kind of building, 30 story building, how do they think that which domestic workers, they, they make that room for the domestic workers, they know, but there's no, uh, uh, the air. I also think, how do they think when they build a building, they have a, this chandelier for how many millions, but for the toilet or the room area for domestic workers, it's like that. So I will also want to know. That. Yeah, it's, it's right, sister, that the, um, the, you know, yums, but the room for the, why do we, put us in the very small room. Uh, there's no proper ventilation and also I wish that uh, there's a, a survey for the employers why they treated their domestic workers like those bad employers. I, I'm not saying that all employers are buying us a fresh fruits and vegetables during pandemic but those bad employers are they willing to answer the survey? That's the question. Thank you. Uh, I think same also, uh, some in Singapore also have condominium. Uh, if the room is very small, the bathroom is so very small for us. Even if we want to shower, we cannot move <laughs> by street like this, so shower. Like, so very spiring, so hot because <laughs> only use the connection is very difficult. Even Wi-Fi also cannot connect. Even we use data the store. Sisters are staying here and they're very good family, you know. Uh, and they treat it like us as a family. And one of the uh, one of the reason I'm here today helping other sisters is because of work others. Uh, so they speak to me at, at home that we are just talking <laughs> bad about the employers. There is very nice and very good employers. We wish all the employers could be like that. So everyone will be happy, me and as well as the employer. So yeah. Thank you for your answers, they were brilliant. All right, we've got time for one more. Brief. The fact that these are penalty, um, MOUs signed to uh, govern sort of uh, training, language skills, migrant workers, and very briefly, I better, I pass those to you. Rebecca, to give a couple of examples of the things that we... That uh, clarification of what penalty is as well. Okay, so I'll, I'll look at both. Um, so 
the um, international very uh, strictly in our um, questionnaire. And with regards to involuntary work, some of the things were uh, working for no or very little accommodation, <laughs> having to work on call hour, so restrictions on movement, so being locked in a house, ID documents or telephones, your mobile privates positively too. Um, the, the penalty is, is a uh, kind of short phrase that we're using to, actu to talk about um, threat of a menace of um, world, um, but these indicators have been agreed by a group of um, tripartite actors. So government, employers, and workers came together to agree this set of indicators. Um, and again, there's several charts in the report, so please do look and you'll see the percentages of responses for each. Okay, I'll, um, thank you very much, Rebecca. I'll have a go at the questions of the Cambodian population that we surveyed in Malaysia being in forced labor was absolutely <laughs> shocking in terms of it being so high. It was unfortunately not terribly shocking in terms of it being the Cambodian population that was most at risk of forced labor. Over several years, the memorandum of understanding between Cambodia and Malaysia has had a bit of a stop-start process, which has meant that a lot of the Cambodian migrant workers in Malaysia have fallen into irregular situations. And irregular situations can increase your risk or your likelihood of taking on jobs that perhaps are not good and staying in jobs that are not good because the migration regimes are such that if you are found, you will be deported. The new MOU for Malaysia and Cambodia, I believe, is actually... Um, MOUs, unfortunately, are not enforceable. So while we have seen some good outcomes for MOUs, including a minimum wage, particularly in Singapore, we've seen some improvements in salaries for domestic workers where minimum wages isn't the way the ILO would like to go. Um, first and foremost, of course, that a minimum wage should cover all domestic workers, migrant or national, in any country context. It's the wage at 200, then perhaps another country will set it at 100 so that they can gain access to this destination market, market for their migrant domestic workers. So while migrant domestic workers as for the skills being recognised and more regular migration pathways being opened up, um, yes, we are still looking for major change in those areas. I think the most important one for the migrant domestic workers themselves is to see those skills recognised not necessarily in in improved migration channels, though that would be wonderful, but to see the skills recognition in increased pay and better conditions. We're yet to prove characteristics. Maybe it's a nationality. Maybe they want somebody who's unmarried. Maybe they want somebody of a particular religion, rather than, as in all of our other jobs, looking for somebody who can actually do the work that they need done in the homes. Hopefully that answers the questions of the people online. One to, the, to the knowledge base on this issue, so congratulations. I just wanted to push the envelope a little bit. I think it's a brilliant insight that yes, domestic workers are not low skilled, they are medium skilled uh, within this frame that's been established. Uh, I mean, I think fundamentally domestic work is the key type of work that challenges that model. Uh, domestic workers have so many skills which are very different. That maybe this hierarchical system of skills that we have is more fundamentally flawed and, and in particular is that ever going to be conducive to this in that context. Thanks. Maybe some of this is going to start us off. <laughs> um, ben, yeah, agreed. They invert, hope move this idea of being skilled versus unskilled and consider what is essential in maintaining all of our lives and our livelihoods and our humanity. Um, did you want to speak as well? I don't know if the skills is in the from, from my work. At the time when I worked for one family and moved for another family in 20, by the age of 20, I was expert in looking after the toddler. So I don't know. The skills, oh, when you say skills, comes from where are you, you measure by paper or certificates or something like that. For me, skills come from the experience of work. 
And that's, uh, I think, absolutely the challenge that we'll experience that domestic workers have when they may not have experience, skilled and understanding in their jobs. So I think that concludes our Yes, section. good timing, great timing. So please, everybody, put your hands together for Anna and our sisters. Thank you for all your insightful comments. Thank you for your passion. Thank you for willing, be willing to give up your time to talk. Obviously, I'll get through them really fast, I promise. Um, firstly, thank you to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Thailand for hosting us. Um, it's a great place, so do sign up if you're not a member yet. Thank you again to the donors of the Triangle and ASEAN Project work um, in supporting you know, our domestic workers and the research in this area. Um, thank you to Stephen Jiraporn, the communications team, for doing, helping out with the press release and the social media here. Um, thank you to our tech team for handling the online hybrid um, thing and for pushing next on the slides. Thank you to the researchers of this report, Daniel and Jenna. Um, couldn't have been done without you. You literally made this event happen because there's no event without a report. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you to the Triangle team, to Anna O, to Anna E, to Rebecca, to Alexa Port for showing that we care about the rights of domestic workers. Um, again, care about. Um, and lastly, but most importantly, thank you to Liesl, Yanti, and Champa for your passion, for your words, um, just being amazing people all around. Um, yes, can we get a round of applause for everybody? <laughs> your friends about it, please take, thank you for coming. <laughs> get a photo, yeah.